Hi everyone and welcome to today's video of a golf course. This is a painting that I did uh, based on a reference photo. It is the largest canvas that I have worked on. It is 30 by 48 and I think it came out beautiful. Um, but for today's video I wanted to talk to you about some things and kind of just do a chatty paint with me um, video. It's not going to be a tutorial because I did not include all of the footage in this video because it would have taken way, way, way too long to talk through every single thing I did. But I did want to share this with you and kind of talk you through uh, some of the steps that I'm taking to create this painting. So here I am mixing up white, phthalo blue, and um, a blending gel medium and then setting that aside and then in a separate little container taking the the light blue that we just mixed up and adding even more white and a little bit more blending gel medium to it to create the cloud color so this is the first blue that we mixed up it's um, the base for our sky and i'm just going to be applying that with the palette knife and then brushing it with my large two inch paintbrush and filling that in as the sky background. Now you might notice that the canvas is already painted. I did an underpainting with a very bright blue <laughs> and a very bright green. I will um, list the exact names of the colors in the description. Um, and the point of an underpainting is just so that in case your paint skips um, and you end up with those tiny little pinholes that where you can see through to your canvas, um, you would just be seeing through to the underpainting. So green where the grass is gonna grow, <laughs> going to go and blue for the sky. And then I just dotted some white along the horizon line because the sky in the photo kind of fades to a lighter blue. So here with my one inch brush, I'm going back to that light blue color that we mixed up. This is just simply the sky blue color with some added white and I'm going to be filling in the clouds. So for this, I'm just um, creating the shape with the base color and then I will go in with some white highlight. Um, I'm just adding white and kind of building the form and defining the shape of the clouds. So from the photo that I was using, I measured out, um, I basically cut the photo in thirds and then did the same with the canvas. So um, I used like the top left <laughs> section of the photo, I had like lines drawn on it and then, so that would be the same as the top left section of this canvas. So that's kind of how I pictured it in my head and drew it out on my photo to like place all my objects and kind of create that composition. So I'm just going through and adding in all my clouds, progressively getting smaller as they get farther and farther away. And here I am measuring out my canvas just to make sure that um, I'm like creating markings for where things are going to go. And I'm measuring a one inch section where my tree line is going to go. And I'm just kind of dotting where um, where it starts and ends. It's not a perfect size, but this is the tree line that I'm talking about. And I'm also going to show how I color match these colors. So I'm going to show with that tan color that we did, I'm taking white, red, yellow, and um, green, and this blending gel medium, which I've been using this whole time. I love this product. It really helps extend your paint so they don't dry so fast. So I'm just gonna be taking all of those and mixing them together. And so here's the color that I ended up with. It's a little too green. So I'm going to show you how I fix that. So basically, if it's too green, you're just gonna take the opposite color on the color wheel, which is red. So we're just gonna add in some red and add in a little bit of white and mix that together. And then you get this color 
which is pretty much perfect. I feel like it um, matches quite well with the tree line. So, and then here I'm gonna show you how to make this darker green. So I'm gonna be taking that same green, red, and blending gel medium, mixing that up. These are all old um, containers that um, instead of recycling, I'm reusing. So I love this green. I just think it's so pretty mixed with the red and that will be the green that's going to be going on the right. So I'm using a fan brush to create a lot of the details in the skyline. And for my palette, this is actually a picture frame that I am using to mix my paints on. It's really easy because then I use a paint scraper and I just scrape off all of the paint once I'm done. And this painting is done in acrylics, um, not oils. And then I'm just lightly grabbing some other colors and creating some variation. These trees are very, very far away, so just little dots leave the impression of leaves and branches. And it all comes together at the end. And here is a close-up view of how I am dotting with my fan brush to kind of create that texture and illusion of trees far in the distance. Basically taking that yellow color mixed with the green and blending those together. And this is the um, horizon line that goes all the way to the right ha half of the photo. And on the right side, it does curve up a little bit, so I'm going to be adding that detail in as well. And there were some lighter trees in the background and then that tree line came down further on the right hand side and here I'm taking my palette knife and um, dipping it in the dark green and then just kind of creating lines to give impressions of tree trunks. So here on the left hand side there was a development community right next to the golf course so I sketched this out with a pencil first and then I'm just going in and filling in all the houses and mixing up the colors um, to match all of the houses. And this part of the painting took me the longest, it's very 
um, it's highly detailed so I yeah definitely took my time here and just kind of went and color matched as I saw fit to the photo it's not a perfect science but you know <laughs> And this part is a wall that's actually like a stone wall that kind of creates elevation from the houses and then goes down to the golf course. And I'm filling it in using that dark green from before to kind of create more of a realistic grass color. As well as shadows for the houses. And yeah, I just basically using my angular brush and creating a bunch of houses using detail brushes, angular brushes um, to kind of finish that development area off. And then I'm laying in my river, which I drew this out in pencil as well, just to make sure I had the exact shape of the river. And then I go in and add more details of the rest of the paint. So I did the remainder of the golf course off camera, um, and then this is the green that I'm using for the majority of the golf course. And then there was like a little water section in the bottom right, so I just added that in too, as well as a sidewalk. And basically just filling in and color blocking the rest of the grass and the canvas. So here I am adding in a lot of trees <laughs> and I'm using all of those colors on the color palette for tree trunks and leaves and details to go on top of the trees. And this I'm following along the photo but honestly I'm adding in um, trees at random too because there are so 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 many <laughs> as you probably saw in the beginning of the video. So. Yeah, the larger ones are exactly based on the reference photo and as well as most of the small ones in terms of placement and then just kind of adding random ones in to kind of fill the space. So once I'm done, I'm going to create a satin varnish using the Liquitex matte and gloss mediums. And first I'm going to be wiping off my canvas with a paper towel and some water. This canvas is completely dry. I've let it sit for days before varnishing and I'm mixing up equal parts of the gloss medium and the matte medium to create satin. So I'm just taking my big brush and applying three coats to this painting, which makes it, um, it gives it the same finish that you would get with your regular paints. However, it makes it waterproof and helps against UV um, protection and just helps if in the case that you needed to clean your canvas you could wipe it with a paper towel and just adds that extra layer of protection so i go ahead and paint this over the entire canvas wait <laughs> wait a day add another coat wait a day add another coat and this is the final product i'm really happy with how this turned out um i don't often do paintings to this scale so it was really exciting and i really enjoyed it so if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for weekly content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend and I will see you next week for another video. Bye everyone.